Happy Father's Day, and welcome to Ask Us Anything. Yes, uh, we're Mike and Jen, and this is our Sunday night regular program, and to all of our dads and granddads out there, great great damn dads out there, we hope you had a great, great day, and um, hope you had a nice time camping, maybe, with a barbecue with all your loved ones, but uh, if not, we'll talk camping here tonight, so we are delighted to, to be with you. We are really delighted tonight because uh, we have a special announcement. Our latest book, I believe it's our 15th. Uh, I'll have to add them all up because we've been producing about every three months. It's now available. This is the first announcement. It is uh, our Michigan Lower Peninsula Guide. Now, there's a, a link to it right there. And we'll get a beep here on my phone. The first purchase we get. So this is just <laughs> went live right now. And uh, that's pretty cool. I'll let you know when I get a little ding on my phone when somebody buys a book. This is our companion guide to the Upper Peninsula book that we have out there and to our Great Lakes uh, version. We have a whole Great Lakes shoreline trip. This one is on the mitten, the lower peninsula, the mitten, uh, the lower hand uh, as compared to the upper hand in the UP. Uh, and uh, this is a, a seven-stop guide, uh, our seven favorite stops uh, in Michigan. And this, uh, we think, is really going to be a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's a really neat book. I'm going to bring up a little video here with it and show you what that's like. And um, I need to unmute me. I think, can you hear me, Phyllis? No. No. no oh. you, you can't hear me. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, there's some stuff going up and showing it. Sometimes it cuts me off when I would show a little video like this. So. Uh, this is our guide. I'm going very quick, but as you can see, it's uh, it's very easy to read. There are links, hyperlinks in there, and those hyperlinks uh, will show you uh, everything that you want to see uh, about where to go, what to see. You can click on it for more information, and uh, we just are really excited about this thing. Uh, it's been so much fun putting the book together, and uh going back and getting some more of the photos and recalling all of our favorite sights and sounds in Michigan. And um, this is it. This is the Michigan Lower Peninsula Seven Stop Adventure Guide. And we hope that uh, that you guys will take a look at that. This is how you get it. And uh, it's uh, like all of our books, uh, it's seven bucks, seven bucks. And uh, this, is, this is a perfect summer trip for you. Uh, the Lower Peninsula of Michigan and we're really excited and it's a companion guide it's got some other stuff in with it it's got uh, uh, if you want to uh, buy a bundle we can you can buy the lower peninsula and the upper peninsula uh, a two-pack or you can get a three-pack for the Great Lakes shoreline tour which is uh, the U.S. side of all the Great Lakes and then the upper peninsula and the lower peninsula and that's we call it the ultimate three <clears throat> uh, bundle but the, the, we've completed now, uh, we have three books on Florida, and now we have three books roughly on Michigan with the Lower Peninsula Guide. We've been telling you about it for a long time, and um, let's see, nobody's bought it yet. I guess it takes a couple <laughs> minutes to kind of go through there, uh, but I'll get a little ding when somebody does, and uh, we'll see if we can figure out who it is and give them a shout out. Uh, so we'll tell you more about that as we get going, but um, uh, please help us spread the word. Um, we're really excited. This is 15th, our 15th in our adventure stops. Uh, and uh, this is a great trip. Uh, it's geared for RVers. We tell you where to camp. Uh, sometimes we'll tell you where to eat. Uh, we tell you this, the key things that you need to see and how to get there. And so you can plan out this trip. You can do it in, well, if you really want to go crazy, you could do it in seven days, but you could do a week at each stop. That's how much stuff there is to see there. We like Michigan. We do. We do. That's all she's got to say tonight. <laughs> You're probably still catching your breath because we've been uh, been doing all these Father's Day things all day. All right, we'll come back. We'll tell you more about Michigan and our guide. We'll promote as much as we can tonight because can you tell we're a little excited to get that book done? Uh, but let's start with your questions tonight and your comments, and uh, we'll go with some of those. We start with our friend Ed Richards. And Ed says, greetings from hot and humid Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'll be watching and listening from the uh, stationary bike in Planet Fitness. Pedal faster, Ed. 
Uh, uh, is that going to go over on my side, or am oh, I going to? I can put it over on your side. Oh, sure. Thank you. Jennifer's thank you. Jennifer's looking thank at you. where the screen is at. Um, Ed uh, is uh, working out as he's watching this uh, in Planet Fitness. Turn it up real loud so you can everybody can hear us. Well, Ed. you know, I think maybe you could do that too. We'll get Shh. the bike in here, and you can work out and you do know, this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Bradley Olson checking in with a question. All right. When filling the water tank on your RV at a campground, is it necessary to attach the water pressure regulator? It's not necessary. You can just run the hose right through. But, but I think it's wise. It is wise. Just as it's wise to put a filter in, it's also wise to put the water pressure regulator on. Um, over 60 pounds of pressure many of the the pipes, the plumbing system on RVs will burst. They're not meant to handle that much pressure. Now, um, most somewhat modern campgrounds regulate those, but not all. We found some that are just like a gusher comes out, way too much pressure. So uh, we always suggest putting the water pressure regulator in line before you run it into your tank. Just as we also suggest a surge protector at the electric hookup pedestal. And as we suggest filters uh, on the on the hose where you connect it to the uh, campground water supply. So uh, good to have, but it, you know, you don't have to, but you should. Hope that answered your question, Bradley. Loda. Would you buy another leisure travel van? Yes. In fact, we are. <laughs> we hope to get one uh, as early as September, if, if we're lucky, if the build goes through, but uh, uh, we'll tell you more about that later on. But yep, uh, we're going to be a two RV family. One is our fifth wheel, which we just did a video on yesterday, which will be kind of our base camp at our property in Tennessee. And if we get some property in Michigan and maybe for some special trips as well, we'll be taking it in a month to uh, Elkhart for our Elkhart encounter. Um, by the way, I think we still have a couple of openings at Elkhart, so uh, we'll have to put that address up. Uh, we knew this would happen because, uh, you know, people make plans and then they can't make them. So there are still two openings. If you would like to join us, there's the address to go. That's in a month. Just a great time we're going to have in Elkhart, the RV capital of the world, driving school, tours, the RV Hall of Museum. In fact, we're staying right on the grounds. And you can, uh, you can find it there. And we'll have our Arcadia fifth wheel there. But uh, back to Lola's question, I think. Yes, indeed. We, we would buy another leisure travel van. In fact, we have. <laughs> so we're just waiting for it to come now. So thank you for that question. Gloria Maillard. What advice would you give on how to manually level a motorhome? That's uh, a good question. Um, patience. Uh, the first thing is, is uh, you know, always before you pull into the campsite, get out and eyeball it because uh, from the rear view mirror, as you're backing in, it may look like it's level, but get out and look it over, walk it, and you'll see there might be a slope. And uh, oftentimes, if you put your wheels in a certain place, you can get pretty level right there on the site. And sometimes you might have to back up a couple of times. But we use, uh, if you're manually leveling it, we always recommend that you have a level and get one about that long if you can. Put that inside on the center floor of your RV. And then you can see which side has to go up and by how much. And then um, you, the simplest thing are those little like Lego blocks that you can put underneath the wheels. There's also, I think Anderson makes a hitch. It's kind of a round thing like that. And you can kind of drive up in different positions on it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I would do a manually. If you're talking about a big trailer or a fifth wheel, uh, you are going to need, you know, some leveling jacks, which will have come with that. And if you're doing it manually, um, use that level that you put in the inside and have a lot of patience. Oftentimes before you even begin that, if you look at it, if it's way off, just see if you can pull forward and then maybe move it into a different, a little different angle. It's something I noticed a lot of places they have wood and it's not that wide. And it has always seemed to me like driving up on that piece of wood, 
it's not as wide as your tire. And those blocks that we get, the Lego blocks, you know, they're a square. Yeah. So it seems like that would be better yeah, rather than trying it, to it is use trying a couple to, pieces of wood under your wheels. Yeah, you don't want your tire to overlap on either side the wood. You want it, you want that wood or whatever you're using as leveling to get, get one side up. You want it to be at least as wide as your tire. So, yes, absolutely. And I'm a difficult person to live with because it needs no. to be flat for me. I mean, uh -huh. I don't like sleeping on a slant. I guess I'm not tired enough. I like it. I like, I can't usually can't sleep unless it's yeah, flat. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point. Jennifer is, you know, the old uh, Princess and the Pea. The Princess and the Pea fairy tale. Remember that? The princess had a and I pea also, underneath her. Her mattress, her mattress and, it, and she felt it and they kept putting stuff up, but that's kind of Jennifer. She knows. And I have another rule that my head is higher than my feet. I don't sleep. So it's not completely level. You want your head up a little bit. I'm, I don't care, but I'm my, I don't want my feet higher yep. than my head because one morning you woke up and I switched ends. <laughs> yeah, I went over to kiss you good morning and it was your big toe I was looking at. Yeah. Uh, Yep. Yeah. So I have my rules about sleeping. Yes. And and that means a level RV. I, I prefer. So hope that helps, Claire. Inca Schultz. Okay. In your Wonder RV, did you put mattress toppers or change the mattress? We do have just a little, what do you, uh, like inch egg and carton. And yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it isn't even that. Yeah. yeah, it's just an inch and a half. We do have a, a little topper like that. And because we often use the RV super bag, you got the winter side, the summer side, and the summer side's up. You've got a pad with the winter side down, so that's something else to um, add to your comfort if you want it a little bit softer. We have not changed out the mattress, and uh, we haven't seen any need to, so um, we haven't changed it out. And uh, mattress toppers, I don't know how high you can go before it's going to interfere with what, like what we have, the rear storage opening up that piece of plywood and mattress lifting it. Oh, I, I think you could I don't know. That. You could put a couple. You three think inches. you could put a three-inch yeah. topper on it? Uh, but but I think the bottom line is we've been very happy with yeah. the mattress in the Wonder. Mm -hmm. It's very good, and we do have that little more like a, it's it's not quite a sleeping pad. It's a little bigger than that, but maybe it's it's a very of all the toppers, it's just, it's it's uh, an inch and a half, maybe an inch and a half yeah, at the most, and it's mm -hmm. it's great. It adds a little bit. Uh, a comment from English okay. shows. Uh, saw your video on the fifth wheel. Uh, uh, loved uh, you, you uh, your use of baskets in the cabinets and refrigerator. Thanks for all your hints and tricks. Yeah, I those baskets are great because I thought you just can't have things <laughs> moving around like that up there. And we got a couple other little things up there too for whenever we do that walkthrough. Not that yeah. I've done that much, but yeah, our a next bit. our next video. Well, we got a couple we've got it coming, but but we've got one coming up soon about how we've accessorized and how we've how we've uh, furnished the fifth wheel. And uh, about the time we get that out, we'll be getting our new uh, our class C van, and we'll be doing a video on that too. So we got lots of videos. You like Vanna? You do, yeah. Hello. Hate to butt in, but um, something's wrong with our link, so I'm gonna go fix it. And uh, you get to put the questions up. Uh, oh, good. I like putting the questions up. Okay, I now, always, we're moving always, back yeah, now you can ask me the stuff. That <laughs> so, um, so Phil is saying that the link that we had is not working uh, on our Lower Peninsula book. And thank you for whoever did report that. Uh, I checked it and it was working, but we'll get it fixed. So please stand by. We, I was I was a little worried because I didn't see anybody buying one yet. <laughs> anybody buying our book? Well, you know, I like to go back and start to say hello to everybody. So uh, you're gonna I'm go gonna, back to the top. I'm gonna just do a couple. Ron says hi from hi from upstate New York, uh, and and we kind of like that. Um, we kind of like that. Yeah, we kind of like upstate New York. We like upstate New York a, <laughs> a lot, lot, especially the you know the Adirondacks. Oh yeah, oh, that's very awesome. pretty. And uh, here's a comment from Robin Ostermeyer. Happy Father's Day. And thank you for teaching and for your encouragement. Well, thank you, Robin. And that's always good. Uh, Judy Frick uh, checks in. Where did I just see her here? From sunny Wisconsin. Uh, Rodney is uh, in Ludington, Michigan, right on the shores of Lake Michigan. 
happy Father's Day from Rodney Roberts. Uh, Justine Ralston says Ohio from Ohio. Hello from Ohio. And um, let's uh, let's. Oh, here's somebody in Indiana. So excited to see you guys in Indiana, Rosamond. Yes. And let me again tell you about that, and I'll I'll try and we'll try and get that link up about uh, Indiana. But um, this is our uh, eight July 18th through the 21st. We will be holding a gathering in Elkhart, Indiana, and uh, we try and do gatherings a couple times a year. We're about ready to announce another one in October, so stay tuned for that. But the one in Indiana is right on the grounds of the RV um, Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana, the RV capital of the world. And we've got a uh, catered meal. We got tours of the museum. We got tours of RV factories. We've got an RV driving school. If you've always wondered what it would feel like to pull a fifth wheel, or something else, yeah, or just some hints on driving your vehicle, yeah, right? Yeah, it will be, yeah, it'll help you drive what you have. And we got some food trucks, we've got some entertainment, we've got uh, seminars on solar and energy, and and uh, Mike is going to sing for you. Well, that wasn't part of the entertainment. <laughs> Well, going on and it on it depends it. on what those social nights, social <laughs> hours are at the uh, at the beginning of the evening. You know, I might actually sing and dance. I don't know. Well, you can help me dance. So, so anyway, that's uh, that's what Ro Rosamond is talking about, and you can uh, find out. We'll put that link up. It'll just go up as we're talking later on tonight, and you can you can jump on it. So um, we had got a good evening from sunny Wisconsin too. Yeah. What's uh, Abid Nawab? What's, what's the best time to camp in Michigan? I like September and October. That's well, me personally. How about July? July is well. If you probably, like it hot, I like it well, when the, bugs, the, when the great bugs lakes, there. When you're by the Great Lakes, it's yeah. never that hot. You know, I just love fall. Yep, but he, he's asking he, the best time, and I would say that the best time is probably July. Phyllis is telling us. Okay, something. Phyllis, let's put up that new link for the book, the correct link. What? It's. Uh, it's, it's correct. Uh, I don't know why I wasn't loading, but use the link that we posted. <laughs> well, let's Either post it LP, again. So. It's LP for Lower Peninsula. And, okay. Um, we'll put that up. We LP. All right. All right. Yep. There you go. We'll leave that up. That's the link to get to the new book on the Lower Peninsula. And it is working. Uh, so hopefully try it again. I checked it before we went on the air and it was working. So, uh, so that's good. Um, I just watched Trivia Arcadia, Roseanne Corbin. Um, yes, Rose, we did. We did a whole blog post yesterday that explained about the van. So we still have yep, both. Yep, we still have both. Yep. And, and we, why don't you explain how we're going to use both of them? So people are like, why do you have two? Well, because we kind of need two. I like the room of the Arcadia. And if you're going someplace and you're going to stay there a while, I think that's a great thing to have. If you want to, be like a little butterfly or hummingbird right. and go from spot to spot to spot. The van is awesome. Even like driving to our kids' house, which are several hours away. Once you, I am so spoiled because I have my refrigerator and a cooktop and beds and everything, bathroom. I mean, if there's something going on, bad uh, traffic, traffic jam, you could pull over and read a book or take a cat nap, do whatever you want to do. So I, I really like both. And one of our goals this year is to, is to stay in places a little bit longer and then more thoroughly explore them. And that's where the fifth wheel is going to be nice. It's just a great base camp. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a cabin on wheels is what we call it's it. It's like a, a cottage. I a, mean, there's a lot of room. Like in a there. cottage. Yeah. Um, so we we're looking forward to that. Eric Miller. How do you pass the time while driving? Audiobooks, ideas? We used to listen to audiobooks all the time, and, and that's a great thing to do. Unfortunately, that storytelling usually puts me to sleep. And then yeah, I say, what did I miss? And, and that's what would happen. You know, like I'd be driving and she'd fall asleep during a great audiobook, and I didn't want to stop it, so I'd let it play. And we'd be four or five chapters in the book down the road, and she'd say, okay, tell me what I missed. And I, I can't begin to tell you what you missed. And so she didn't understand then the rest of the book. And if we can't listen to it together, it doesn't work. Yeah, you so got to keep me awake. Play. It's very hard to keep you and, awake when I'm driving. And yeah. how Mike would love to pass the time would be ham radio. But I, 
I'm not too fond of that. She doesn't like all the noise. I don't like all the noise. Now, when we're in our class B, she can climb in the back and sleep. And that's when I'll turn on the ham radio <laughs> yeah. and, and talk to people around the country. And then Bo gets my seat. So my boys are both yep. happy. I'm gone. They can do what they want. Yep. And she's in the back sleeping. But uh, So passing the time. Podcasts. We like to listen to podcasts. Listen, we listen to a lot of podcasts. Those can, I can keep my attention for 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An hour. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, and um, you know, the natural what, music, whatever like the music you'd like. And uh, sometimes just talking or just having silence. It seems silence. like the older we get, we do treasure and value yeah. silence. Yeah, I, I do. I do love the silence. I'm just watching the countryside. It's a right. great time to catch up on podcasts and things that you never have time to listen to. Good time. Yep. And, and we did get Sirius FM. XM and uh, sometimes we'll listen to the BBC, which is kind mm -hmm. of fun. Their channel on Sirius Satellite Radio, and uh, it's always because they're the only you know, nobody in the U.S. media. You know what our media is like; they don't cover international news, and the BBC is kind of fun listening to it. And uh, a lot of times we enjoy listening to small local radio stations as oh, we're driving yeah. through different communities. I turn on AM radio and find a local station. I mm -hmm. love doing. We that. find that fun. Okay, hope that helps. That's a lot of things. Fred Church. Okay, just returned from New Mexico and had escorts to our RV site at several parks. Uh, should we tip these people? No. Please don't. No, don't. Don't start doing that. <laughs> don't start nope. doing that. Nope. Don't uh, do that. They don't help set up. They simply no. make sure you get to the proper site yep. and, uh, and fit nice. in and everything. And that is such a wonderful service it's to really have K them. KOA does that Yeah, KOA yeah. does that a lot. And I'm sure that saves a lot of uh, posts and you know, trees and everything else, guiding but, people. But don't tip. To don't where tip. they should go. So people don't pull in the wrong spot, and then somebody else comes, and you're in my spot. I mean, I, I just think that they really should probably drive everybody to where they should park. But yep. let's not start Especially tipping. the way campgrounds have raised their prices, like, yeah. like the fuel and everything else. But uh, that's Yeah, but that's, that's a good part question. Of what you're I can for. see why you would ask about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go small, live large. And so, Scott, remind us if you're attending the Hershey, Pennsylvania RV show in September. We are. Wouldn't miss it. We will be there. Uh, we'll be there doing lots of appearances. And I don't know how much reporting we'll be able to do this year because we've got a pretty jam-packed schedule. But we will be there and we'll even host a couple of social get-togethers out there as we get closer. We love the Hershey RV show in September. So, thanks, Scott. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll see you. Regina Aris. Okay, just picked up my Intractera yesterday. What is that one? I don't know that. Intactera. Terra. What yeah, is it's a travel trailer. Oh, okay. Any advice for a newbie uh, relearning how to park a travel trailer? Um, just be very patient. You know, uh, the most intimidating thing for me, uh, to learning how to tow a fifth wheel, is backing in. Uh, so I've been trying, I've been cheating, Regina. What I've been doing is ordering pull-through sites wherever I can find them. But I, I have backed in and, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's just counterintuitive because you turn the opposite way, you know, the opposite way than you want it, than you want it to go. But, um, and I always got to tell you, because there's all these other people out there, their RVs, they're all sitting there with a can of beer watching the park. Ah, oh, look at that guy trying to park. But, Nobody's harassed me, made fun. They've all offered to help. I think the last time you had a guy, he stayed out. We were having some trouble getting it unhitched and stuff when we first got it. And people will help. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the best way to practice is to get in a parking lot, get some of those plastic red cones, and just uh, practice backing into it, uh, into a parking lot. Um, good, good place to do that is like church parking lots. They're usually really big and they've got marked, you know, lines and you can practice them there. Usually go at a time when nobody's there. I wouldn't there. go on a Sunday or a Wednesday night in many parts of the country, but, uh, but go out and, and if you just try it a couple of times, you'll say, well, this isn't so bad. You know, another thing might be the person that you travel with to have them there so that you can work out what left and what right and straight back and your signals. Yep. Or if you're going to use a walkie talkie, you don't have to worry so much about hand signals, but just in case you both need to speak the same language. Okay. I gotta, I've got to just do a quick check. Okay. Here we go. We have one new order. Let's see what this was for. 
Joanne Neely, you bought the Michigan bundle, uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula and Michigan's Lower Peninsula. Thank you, Joanne. You are our very first. That's the first sale of our new book that we just released tonight from the Lower Peninsula. So thank you for that, uh, Joanne Neely. Everybody give her a round of applause. Thank you. We need to get a sound effect for that. You certainly do. Uh, we'll put that up <laughs> again, uh, that link up um, for, uh, for it in a little bit, and we'll tell you more about it. Uh, when, when, we, when we slows down here, Phyllis, put that up, and we'll talk more about it for the newcomers. Ed Malin with the question. All right, question. Any concerns on gas availability this summer and fall? We had a trip planned to the Badlands, but kind of hesitant. Thoughts? Uh, go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, life is short. The, there's not a benefit. We haven't found any problems on gas availability uh, at all. And uh, I had one pump I found a couple of weeks ago in Michigan that was out of diesel. And uh, I just looked on the other side of the pump and it turned out that it was just a malfunctioning pump because they had diesel on the other side. So I just had to come up and around with the truck. Uh, the availability is not there. It's just that it's, it's very costly. Very expensive. But, Ed, we don't know what the next six months are going to be, the next year is going to be. If you had that trip planned and you can swing it, yes, you'll take a hit in your pocketbook, but go out and do it. Uh, gas supplies are adequate. Uh, I've not seen anything anywhere, and we've been in many states over the last month. And the Badlands. Oh, my they're gosh. They're awesome. We love the Badlands. Awesome place. So go for it. Just just uh, cut back in other ways so you can afford all that fuel. It's expensive. Barbara Keller. Ooh, the Aleutian Islands of Alaska Ooh. checking in. I would love to go there, Barbara. Good for you. Uh, we love Alaska. It's one of our favorite states. Um, awesome beauty. Uh, we, our biggest problem with the RV is finding the time to drive from wherever we are to Alaska and back. Because that's like a to do a ride. It's at least three months. And... Uh, Although I really debated, and I'm still not sure that we couldn't do it, is to fly to Anchorage in maybe August, even uh, just before before Hershey, at the end of August, and rent an RV, and then we could spend a couple of weeks. We love Alaska. I I need a fix for Alaska. Don't let so. Bo know we're going to Alaska. Yeah, can't without come. him. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, we could. I don't know what we do with Bo. Uh, Rodney with the question. Looking back. Uh, would you purchase land like you have in uh, Tennessee sooner? Um, yeah, I think if I if it was available, it, it really wasn't available. We bought ours um, just before Thanksgiving last year, and they had just started selling it in that property. Um, and we were really delighted that we got in early because we started with our utilities right after the first of the year, and we got our water in, and we got our septic or sewer in uh, my biggest frustration now is electricity i keep hearing from my guy that it's going to be ready any day any day any day and uh it's just you know it's a small community and there aren't that many electricians that can come out and install them and so um my fingers are crossed i thought it'd be last week and i was hoping maybe this coming week but uh um and, and you know it's warm enough there now that i need uh I need to have air conditioning because <laughs> it's really hot in the woods. But um, I, yeah, we're really looking forward to getting that thing fixed up and finished. I mean, we really, I guess now is a good time as ever to say, uh, we're going to announce to our supporters and our members uh, ahead of time, probably Wednesday of this week or so, we're going to announce to you our next gathering after Elkhart. And I can give you the dates. The dates are going to be October 17th through the 20th uh, of 2023. Uh, that's uh, how people become a member. So they're going to get first crack at it. Uh, but we're going to do uh, a gathering at the Buffalo River in uh, right near our property there in Tennessee, near Linden, Tennessee. We have such a great activity, a bunch of stuff planned. I mean, a great one. Uh, we, we can't wait. We were setting it up last week when we were down there and we can't wait to share it with you. Um, but uh, if you want to save the dates, it's October 17th through the 20th and our supporting um, supporters on YouTube and our member, our members on YouTube and our supporters on Facebook, you'll get the first dibs on this on Friday. And then we'll probably announce it to everybody um, uh, in, a, in a few days after that. So 
Um, so that's good. But we really, uh, we've really fallen in love with that part of the of this of the country, uh, Middle Tennessee, and we love our place there. All right, um, back to your questions. Let's see what we got here. Um, let me jump forward. Uh, RV home. We have a class A, 36 feet long and 13 inches high. 13 feet. I'm yeah. sorry, 13 feet high. Uh, RV, can we uh, make it on the Natchez Trace Trail? Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of places, and if you have picked up our Natchez Trace Guide, you'll see where they are, but there's a couple of places they're well marked where they don't recommend uh, large RVs because there's not a big turnaround. But um, in almost every place, you can you can certainly find most of the turnouts. There's room. You might have to park, you know, along the uh, back end of, you know, how it's like a U shape, and you might have to park along the curb on one end. Um, but yeah, you can you can certainly use it, and you'll love the Natchez Trace. Uh, that was our. That was our spring book. And then again, the one we just are announcing tonight is our Lower Peninsula of Michigan Adventure Guide. Mike Manuel. Okay, this is Hi Friends from uh, South Carolina, Jane. Uh, love the tour of the fifth wheel. If uh, you could only have one RV, would it be a, a B, C, or oh, a fifth wheel? That, that yeah. depends yeah. on how you want to use it. Because we're travel writers, I guess, you know, we're out there traveling around all the time. We wanted the experience of the uh, fifth wheel. We wanted to drive it. You wanted to learn how to drive it and park it and have that room and have a better understanding for all the folks who drive that. And as we say, we want to stay in places longer and use it as a base camp. Right now, I'm very smitten with that fifth wheel. Just And so is Jennifer. Just look at the video we released yesterday on it. Uh, but we also love our class C uh, from Lisa travel events because uh, you know, we do a lot of places, for example, we do appearances at RV shows around the country. Um, we do stories that we're out uh, shooting all the time. And sometimes that requires us to go really quick to one place and then do another and then do another. And for that kind of work on the road, we love having the class C, the small motorhome. but for our own enjoyment and relaxation, uh, it's really nice to have the fifth wheel. So uh, you're gonna right now we, we, it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. And, and for, we're great. for a while. Hey, let's do a shout out to uh, Regina. What did I just saw her. There she, let me get her back here. There she is. Welcome. Regina just became one of our YouTube members, a supporter on YouTube. And uh, thank you. So Regina, you're going to get first to dibs uh, on Wednesday on our gathering in Tennessee that we're going to announce. And uh, we want to thank you for supporting us uh, and uh, becoming a, a member uh, from our, on our YouTube community. That's awesome. Um, so can I talk about the, okay, Krisha, I want to talk about the book again. Krisha Roth. Okay, saying hi from a KOA, Fredericksburg, Virginia. I'm a new RV, RVer full time. And I was wondering, what's the best product to break down waste in the black tank? Um, Water? <laughs> Lots of water. All you know what most people don't do, Krista, is put enough water in before they empty. And um, we like Happy Camper. Uh, that's the that's a really good brand that we've been very happy with, Happy Camper. And we had another one that we we gave away. We had a sample. I can't remember. Do you remember the name of that, Phyllis? The other company that we talked about. Uh, we used their product. I like it. Oh, do you remember them? Yeah, I, remember I, was, I was just going to look it up for you, but I think uh, all of that is on, and I'm just going to put this up. On our partner page? Uh, no, the Amazon shop. It's in. Oh, it's our Amazon, Amazon shop. shop. Yeah. 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 We've got two products that we use. Thanks. I'm sorry to bother you, Krisha. Uh, so Krisha, um, Happy Camper is the one that we have been using for the last several years. Very happy with it. But we used another product earlier this year, and I can't remember the name of it. And it's on our Amazon shop, which we'll we'll put up a little bit later on, and you can you can see it there. So, um, so that's good. There's our Amazon shop. Almost all the products we mention, because people are always saying, "Well, what about this? You said this in a video." So we just when we mention a product, uh, and almost all the products that we're talking about, we either use or can can recommend because we've had experience with them. Um, we put them on our Amazon shop. So 
um, you can you can go there and you can check it. I'm looking to see if anybody else has picked up our book. So uh, let's see. What do I have? I can't tell. I'd have to stop and look now. But that's our new book, The Lower Peninsula of Michigan. We just announced it tonight. It just became available. And we urge you to go out and check it out. It's a great compliment if you already have the UP book. You have the Great Lakes by If you want to just come to Michigan because you've heard what a great place Michigan is uh, for camping and RVing, it is. That that book just came available today. Seven stops starting uh, all around the Lower Peninsula. It gives you a circle tour kind of the LP. Uh, you'll miss, you'll see all the big stuff. You won't miss anything. And uh, seven bucks. So go give it a try. We've got a couple of other packages. We've got one with the Michigan Lower Peninsula and the Upper Peninsula. Uh, and that's the link to that, UPLP, get it? Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula. And then we also have one that's kind of like the ultimate bundle, the ultimate three, which is our Great Lakes Shoreline Tour, uh, our UP guide, and our Lower Peninsula guide. So uh, you go check all those out, but really excited about our Lower Peninsula guide to uh, to Michigan. So we hope you guys can, can, uh, can try it. All right, uh, let's see what else we've got here for, for your questions. We don't have a lot of questions. Uh, Linda Barkum. Okay, just discovered the uh, Native American pyrograph. Petroglyphs. Petroglyphs. Yeah. Near Caseville in the Thumb. Right here. Have you ever been there? We have. Um, the sad part, Linda, is somebody vandalized them about two, three years ago. And uh, it's a it's 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 pretty impressive site. I forget what they call the name of the site, but it's uh, it's up just in the thumb area of Michigan. And uh, they were vandalized pretty severely a couple of years ago. And I don't think they ever caught who did it, but uh, it's a very interesting stuff. And uh, it's a, it's well preserved now. They put a big fence around it, but you used to be able to get really close to it. So uh, always impressive to see that. Ken Cooper. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would highly re uh, recommend getting a tire monitor pressure system for the fifth wheel. I put new tires on my fifth wheel with also system and blew one uh, first time out. I'm a believer of the system. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I always think I agree with you, uh, Ken. A, um, a TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system, good thing to have uh, on you want it on all of your all of your wheels, whatever. You and want. it was good, Ken, riding out tire monitor yes. pressure yeah, system. Yeah, a lot of people say TM, it's, it's TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system, but uh, but that's what it does. And uh, you can get wireless ones that, that just screw into the valves and will come back to you, but um, well worth getting. And uh, it's, a, it's a great accessory. Chris Mondo Biondo. <laughs> the CEO of Flying J has recently voiced his concern about the potential shortage of death coming soon. Uh, have you heard anything about on this? We you, reported you about this going on three weeks now. We we did a story on it. Oh, we got somebody that just bought. Let's see. I got to load it loaded up. I'll come back to it in a minute. I love watching you guys buy our books. This is the most exciting part of it all. He loves his books. Uh, but we reported about this three weeks ago. Uh, the, uh, the, the Some people were blaming it on the Ukraine, but really the main ingredients of DEF is urea, which is a kind of a byproduct of fertilizer. A lot of it comes from Canada. We make our own, um, but uh, there is uh, there is a growing uh, shortage of it. Some of the big box stores that sell it restrict you to not being able to take you know multiple gallons with you. Uh, we have been buying our diesel fuel. That's what you need, DEF. It's diesel exhaust, diesel emissions fluid, I think it's called. Uh, either emissions or exhaust fluid, but it's it's part of the clean air stuff. Uh, and we buy ours at the commercial pumps with the truckers where you can actually uh, pump it right at the, at the tank. And um, uh, we haven't had any shortages yet. But yes, um, several people have been talking about and worrying about that as if our poor truck drivers needed more things to worry about. Uh, all the trucks, of course, are diesel. Uh, but we have not seen any evidence of a shortage yet. We've seen some concern uh, voice, but so far it's it's been okay out there, yeah, but scary. Uh, Janice Silverstein. Okay, Gary, and I just found out we are number 20 on the list of uh, producing our 
BT Cruiser. Good for you. 20 people ahead of you. I don't know. They're probably making at least that many a month. So the BT Cruiser, it's not a big manufacturer. It's a great little RV. So, um, so you should be hearing about it soon, Janice. Glad to hear that. Uh, a lot of RVs still are on back order. Steve Whitestock. Just got back from a 10-day trip from uh, South Bend, Indiana to Salt Lake City on I-80. Uh, fewer RVs on the road this year compared to last year. That's I what, don't doubt it. That's, we, we're hearing that, and I think we've noticed that ourselves. Um, this past week, I heard from several of you who uh, noticed that there were no problems getting in any campgrounds, uh, particularly during the week, uh, without reservations. And that's that was that's a surprise because we have all been told how busy all the campgrounds. I am sure there have been lots of cancellations, and uh, I think that's been our experience. We have seen fewer on the road than we normally do uh, at, in the early summer like this. So. Uh, yeah, the fuel crisis uh, is, is the prices. The fuel prices are a crisis, and they are having their effect. So, uh, so that's a that's a big thing. Um, Bob Leach. Okay, where is the best first time place to camp in Michigan? We've never traveled in the state before, and would like to get uh, a relief from the humidity in Tennessee. Okay, where would you say I'm first time to go? Well, obviously they're going north, so bottom of the state is where they are. I so, would send you up to uh, right about here to um, the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes area. Try and get in the Platte River Campground. It's run by the National Park Service or Petoskey State Park, um, Wilderness State Park up by Mackinac, uh, Traverse City State Park by Traverse City. Any of those places, you're a sh relatively short drive to, and you're going to be near the Lake Michigan shoreline, so it'll be a nice breeze coming in. And um, uh, I would send you to the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes, Sleeping Bear National Lake Shore. It's a National Park Service thing. Do some exploring up in there. We write about it in our new book. <laughs> Go get our book, Bob, if you're coming to Michigan. And you can find it. Uh, uh, we talk. That's one of our suggested stops, and that's where I think we would send you. And I think you can tell that we love the the Great Lakes, the Big Lakes, because we got lots of lakes in the interior of the state. But we usually direct people. Mm -hmm. We we do profile two of them. We put Hogan Lake and Higgins Lake mm -hmm. in our new book. And again, that new book is RVLifestyle.com/lp for Lower Peninsula. And I can see uh, that people are actually picking these up now. And uh, and that is really exciting. Let's see if I can. Uh, Joanne Neely, I mentioned. Uh, and Christina Poligrino, Philip Teague, all of you guys. Guy Capra have all picked up our books. And we appreciate you guys doing that. Renee Susie Ayers Wilson. Hey, Renee, are we going to see you in Elkhart? And, oh, she's talking about the October venue. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for us to participate but stay on our own lot in the woodlands? Other words, participate in the activities yeah. but stay yeah, on our own lot. Yes. There, there will be a way, Renee, that you can do that, and uh, there'll be special pricing for you just they're paying for the meals and the and the activities that we have. And you'll see that when we announce it. But, yes, uh, we're... Uh, Renee and, uh, and Jerry are, parts, are neighbors of ours at, uh, in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, there will be a way. Uh, there'll be even a way for people who don't even have an RV who just want to stay in a great hotel uh, and still participate. So we'll tell you all about that later. Norm. Uh, bought a Unity twin bed in November 2020. Now at my dealer in Ontario, Canada, being delivered June 27th. You guys were a big part of this. Well, uh, send an email for a uh, blog post. Well, Norm, congratulations. And uh, uh, so you had to wait a year and a half. Uh, that's about it uh, for, for us, too. We, we're expecting ours in September, October, September, September, October. So we'll keep you informed. But good for you. Enjoy it. Fred Church. We have a Class C and having some difficulty keeping the living area cool with 95 plus temperatures outside. AC works well, but hard to keep up. Any secrets with such hot weather? You know, there is no air conditioner in a motorhome, Fred, that's going to get you down below, much below 80, 82 in that kind of heat, in that kind of humidity. I don't know what the humidity 
Um, the air conditioner will hopefully get the humidity out, but uh, it just can't physically cool it off. You're going to, you know, if you're getting 80, 82, that's about as, as cool as you're going to get it when the temperature is over 95. Uh, so the, the secret is, you know, just like everything else, uh, pull your shades. If you have blackout shades, try and keep the, the you know, all that. Because you'd be amazed how much heat comes in through the windows. Um, best secret is come up to Michigan and stuff and, uh, <laughs> and get away from that heat. But uh, yeah, we don't is, know what uh, state it's, we're it's talking about. It's asking a lot of your AC to get that living room um, any any lower than the 80s. So RV home. Someone told us yesterday you can ferry your RV to Anchorage and then explore. The savings in fuel will almost pay for the ferry ride. You know, I had a we did a story. A, year or two ago about a company that that will ferry your rv to alaska yeah when covid was and, yeah and tough. That, but then yeah then covid came and then last year they offered to do ours for free you know and obviously they knew we were going to probably write about it and i i was thinking about it i still would have had a drive to portland i think it was uh, or seattle and jump on the on the ferry in seattle and go up but yes there is a company uh it's on our blog rvlifestyle.com and uh, just search Alaska and you'll see there'll be a list of a bunch of Alaska stories we've done. But one of them will be about how to ferry your RV. And uh, yes, they do. It's fairly expensive, as you can imagine, but uh, not a bad way to go. Uh, and what you can't go in the ferry. you got to fly in and, and uh, they don't let you ride in the ferry, by the way. Just they just take your RV. Chris, again, with the question. OK, I just had to cancel my KOA reservation for Yellowstone National Park. But today I heard that they will reopen Yellowstone this coming Wednesday. Oh, well, going to Eureka Springs, Arizona. Yeah, they're opening, I, mean, I think, I mean, just the south end. I don't, I think the north end is going to be out for much of the year. Uh, I don't, I've not seen that story today, but uh, I know they're talking about the south end that they're trying to open. Just devastating. Uh, the amount of damage that was done uh, around my, what, Montana, uh, with those storms last week, but uh uh, they've worked really hard, and I think they're just getting the southern uh, entrances open, but not the northern yet. Yeah, with the five entrances, we'll have to check into that. Which yeah. ones are open now? I think it's, they, the Wednesday is, what, is the target date. I, okay. I knew that. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, all right, let's see if we can do a couple more, and then I want to. Well, then it's time for us to kind of end uh, this thing. Red Drum has a question I saw about. Uh, he says, we've been waiting for our delivery of our Thor Chateau for a month. It's built, but waiting to be delivered from Indiana to Southwest Florida. Have you heard of a shortage of delivery drivers? Yes, yes I have. Yes. We have. Uh, there indeed is, like everything else, a shortage of over-the-road truckers. And uh, there is a shortage. Many of the RVers, uh, RV dealerships and manufacturers are having trouble getting people uh, to haul them. So yes, what there are we is. hearing about a trucker. Somebody was telling us a, a trucker used to make like a hundred thousand a year. And the average and is now, like 50,000. Yeah, it's like 50,000. Yeah, the, the median, it wasn't the, the average, median. but the median. Yeah. Is, you know, so a lot of half small, above and half below small them. companies yeah. are going under. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. Uh, okay. A um, couple of things coming up and then we just wanted to, uh, a month from now we will be gathering together, uh, for the RV lifestyle Elkhart encounter. We have, I think three, is it two or three empty spots that we have now in our list that we can, we can fill. And uh, if you go there, uh, you can sign up tonight. Um, there has been a waiting list. We've been filling it in. Uh, these are the last of the three tickets that we could get. There won't be any more, but we urge you to, uh, to, if you would like to join us, uh, it's uh, starts on Monday, July 18th. And it goes till the 21st. We all leave on the 21st. Okay. So obviously there must be a cutoff point where you can't get a refund. Yeah, that's passed. I mean, okay. That's, that's, passed. that's passed. That's okay. Passed. So now if you sign up, you signed up. You signed up. Yeah. Because this is a month away. We got to order food and all the stuff for you. So uh, plus merch. We got awesome prizes. Tour of the RV Hall of Fame. We're camping right on the Hall of Fame grounds itself. We have a driving school that will teach you uh, safely how to either tow or drive whatever RV you have. We have tours of the Keystone Manufacturing Center. It's just a fascinating look at how modern RVs are built. We have seminars on solar, on, uh, on uh, lithium battery technology. We have a Q&A maintenance session for you. 
we got a catered meal, we got food trucks, we've got entertainment, and uh, we just can't wait to get there ourselves. And uh, uh, electricity hookups at all the sites, so you have can run your air conditioner. Uh, there's fresh water that you can fill your tanks. There's a dump station on site so you can empty it. Um, now's the chance to go sign up. That's the address right there. We would love to see you there next month. And we only have three. This is it. We can't get any more after this. We got three tickets available. The last thing we want to tell you about again is tonight's a big night for us. We've already announced it, but uh, uh, our latest book is out tonight. This is the official release party of it. And it's on the lower peninsula of Michigan. We call it the lower hand. And it is a seven-stop adventure guide to the lower peninsula. Please go check it out. Uh, seven bucks. And it's uh, if you've never been to Michigan, particularly in the summer, uh, you are in for a treat. If you have been, this will give you some, I know some new spots that you've never been that you'll want to see. Uh, it's all there. Please check that out. And we, uh, we hope we have a runaway bestseller here with our <laughs> lower peninsula guide. All right. Um, thank you to Chris Cowley over on YouTube for moderating and helping everything move along there. Uh, thank you, Phyllis uh, Karen in, uh, in Iowa. Uh, let's see, Chris is in Illinois, I believe now, and uh, Phyllis is in Iowa. And uh, thank you, Phyllis, for keeping everything going on Facebook and for helping us with the questions. And we want to thank all of you guys so much for uh, being with us as you are uh, every Sunday night. We had so many of you say when we talked about last Sunday, well, maybe we should, we talked in the podcast, maybe we should cut the Ask Us Anything. And people told us that we were a part of your Sunday night routine and you wanted us to continue. So continue, we will. Uh, check out the podcast uh, this Wednesday and uh, check out our gatherings. Uh, we would love to see you at one of them this year. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Happy trails. <laughs>